everyone, Erica Griffin here, Associate Director of Membership and Volunteer Services at the DuSable Museum of African American History. Welcome to Mondays with the Do, your headquarters for everything DuSable Museum. Thank you for joining us and tuning in. Now, to learn more about the DuSable Museum, we ask you to visit our website at www.dusablemuseum.org. You can also give us a call at the museum at 773-947-0600, or you can always stop by for a visit, 740 East 56th Place, Chicago, Illinois, 60637. That is 57th and Cottage Grove. For those of you who have social media accounts, make sure you give us a shout out. Our hashtags are DoCanTV, that's D-U-C-A-N-T-V, or hashtag DuSable Museum. Now, as you all know, for those of you who have visited us over the summer, we have had some amazing programs. We had our Arts and Crafts Festival. I hope you were all out there making your purchases and supporting Black art. We also have had our ongoing jazz series, as well as our movies in the park. And for the end of the summer, there's no exception. There's tons for you to come out and do. So let's take a quick sneak peek at the website and see what we have coming up. So on Saturday, August the 19th, we've got a great edition of Movies in the Park for you. We are showing Southside with you, the amazing film that showcases the first date between President Barack Obama and Mrs. Obama, the f former first lady. It's an amazing family film. We want you all to come out, bring your friends, bring your family, bring your blankets, and come out and show your support for the film and for the DuSable Museum. Now, for those of you who were not aware, this year, 2017, marks the 100th anniversary of the birth of Dr. Margaret Burroughs. Dr. Margaret Burroughs is our principal founder and the impetus behind the organization of and the creation of the DuSable Museum of African American History. So we have an amazing film series dedicated to her, those she has inspired, and films that sort of show showcase uh, the concept of the strength of the black woman, the myriad of personalities of the black woman, and basically all things that Dr. Burroughs would definitely want to have showcased in her museum. So again, this fall, the end of this summer, no exception. Let's take a look at what we have coming up. We have, as part of the Margaret Burroughs Centennial Film Series, we have first coming up, Tuesday, September 5th, a two-part film series. We're going to show two short films. The first being The Black Woman, 52-minute film uh, by Stan Latham. And then we also have Spirit to Spirit, Nikki Giovanni. So both of those films will be shown Tuesday, September 5th, starting at 7 p.m. with discussions to follow. Also on uh, Tuesday, this is later on in the fall, but we'll make mention of it now, Tuesday, November 7th, we have another installation of the Margaret Burroughs Centennial Film Series. And on that date, we'll be showing the edge of each other's battles, the vision of Audre Lorde. Now, Audre Lorde was very popular during the second wave of the feminist movement here in the U.S. And it this film will focus on Audre Lorde, her impact, her influence that she had nationwide, worldwide, really. Um, and basically, it's focusing on black arts and black liberation, women's liberation, and also gay and lesbian liberation as well. So a lot of great poignant films coming up um, for all of you to come out and enjoy. So be sure to visit the website to learn more. Now, last week, we were joined by our archivist and special collections librarian, Miss Skyla Hearn. Thank you for joining us again. So glad to have you here with us. Yes, indeed. And she gave us an outstanding overview of what it means to be an archivist, how you two can get involved if it's something that you're interested in, and how Skyla herself became interested in this amazing, um, amazing field of work. And every time I talk to her, I learn something new, literally every single day, today included. So uh, Skyla, again, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, and just to recap, for those of you who are not familiar with the museum field, or the museum world, museums have three basic tenets. So what they are um, prescribed to do is A, collect objects that speak to the mission, the organ organizational mission of the institution. They are to preserve those objects in perpetuity, and they are to use those objects to teach to the missions or the institutional missions of the organization. So 
archives and archival documentation and collection of these objects fits right in with each one of those tenants. Mm -hmm. So Skyla, if you could, please let our audience know, for those who didn't tune in last week, what it means to be an archivist, um, basically what it means to be an archivist. We'll start there. Okay, sure. And thank you for having me here on the show. No problem. All righty. So archivist, um, what we do is we oftentimes create and when there's always when there's already an archives has been created we manage the archives um, we and then we maintain the archives um, which means that you know we preserve them and we provide access to them and then you know you may be asking well what is an archives archives speaks to the spaces where archival collections are kept and archives also is the bodies of materials that support the narratives individuals communities or organizations and companies um, of said uh, archival collections. And then just to follow up with that, uh, some types of archives are independent, such as the DuSable Museum. Mm -hmm. Our archives is in an independent space. Um, and then there are also private, academic, corporate, community, and personal archives. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we're probably going to get this question for sure. So we know that archives collects and then the collections department also collects. Mm -hmm. So what would make one be in archives versus a collection uh, space at a museum? Okay, mm -hmm. um, and so to directly address that question, I will specifically focus on the DuSable Museum. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, one really good way to differentiate would be to think about 2D objects versus 3D objects. Uh -huh. And so in the archives, we typically have more 2D objects, papers, photographs, uh, ephemera, and to answer your question, ephemera, are materials that represent a particular time in history. You know that broadsides, yes, mm -hmm. posters, uh, things of that nature. But then it kind of crosses over a little bit into collections like buttons and mm -hmm. you know t-shirts, things of that nature. Like speaking more uh, recent things. Um, but collections uh, is more, especially in our case, a focus of artworks, artifacts, uh, things of that nature. So then that's how you could really just break it down. When you think about archives, think about, you know, uh, historic papers, uh, photographs, uh, serials, uh, mm -hmm. um, journals, things of that nature, and then collections. Uh, paintings, uh, artwork, sculptures, uh, and things of that nature. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I know that question is going to come as soon as those phone lines light up, so thank you so much for, oh, for sure. answering some definitely. of those. Oh, sure. Definitely. Yes, yes, I yes. get that question all the time. I'm sure, yes, for sure. Yeah. Now, what if someone was interested in assisting you as you are making these headways into organizing our archival material? Is there a way that they could do that? Definitely. So you could reach out to me uh, on our website. Uh, it's my email address address is list, listed mm -hmm. on our website, which is uh, shern at dusablemuseum.org. Uh, and at that point, I would receive your information, um, a, a resume, or just a statement of purpose um, mm -hmm. informing me on what it is that you would like to actually do in the archives. A huge part, which is so important to us, is cataloging um, or describing our materials. Uh, and every archives definitely has a need for that type of work uh, in creating what we call or refer to uh, as our finding aids, which supports, it documents the pieces that are in the archives. Okay. Um, so that's that would be the first step. Okay. Uh, then after that, you would come in, we would talk, yep. uh, mm -hmm. and then you know find a suitable place for you to mm -hmm. help me uh, in our archival collection. Okay, amazing. Mm -hmm. And all of you, if any of you are interested, as Skyla said, make sure you visit that website. Click on the link to send her an email, and that will get the ball rolling. Yes. Because the DuSable Museum certainly needs all the volunteers and support that it could get for those who have the yes. skill set. Yes. In there as well. <laughs> um, definitely. Yes. So every day, you know, we find new things in the archives, mm -hmm. amazing pieces, amazing letters and documents, so on and so forth. But the primary goal that you have in place right now is to get all of that into some kind of an order, correct? Yes, yes, okay. definitely. Okay, so mm -hmm. as you mentioned, that's the primary goal. Okay, all right, so back to our founder. Like every time we talk about these amazing things that each department is doing, I just get so excited because I know that she is up there beaming with pride. We're yes. getting our house in order. We're getting her house in yes. order yes. so it's just it's amazing to see just how far we have come from an institution that was literally housed in dr burrow's basement mm -hmm. to a, a a 
world-renowned institution that it is mm -hmm. today. It's absolutely amazing. You think you could give us a little background briefly on Dr. Burroughs? Sure. Okay, okay so Dr. Burroughs moved to Chicago when she was about five years old from uh, St. Rose Parish in Louisiana with her family. Uh, and, you know, just a little side note, Dr. Burroughs' family um, were for the time affluent in their own community. Uh, yes, exactly, they were landowners, um, wow. had their own businesses, uh, but they decided to move north uh, as a lot of families did during that time during the Great Migration. Okay. So mm -hmm. she arrived here um, through you know the process of the Great Migration with her family to Chicago. And like I said, she was a little girl, so she went to elementary school here throughout her um, higher education. So, um, you know, from being in high school at Inglewood High School uh, to attending the School of the Art Institute. Um, and then after that, uh, Dr. Burroughs, of course, started her professional career. But before starting her professional career, uh, she very much so was an activist, you know, an artist, a writer, poet. Um, and she initially helped to establish the Southside Community Art Center. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, as a very young person, uh, raising funds at around the age of 19 wow. or so to help Amazing. to yes, establish this place, which is still operable it is. Uh, in yes. the Bronzeville community. Mm -hmm. um, and then fast forwarding, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, she and her husband, Charles Burroughs, um, opened the uh, DuSable Museum, which initially was called the Ebony Museum, uh, in their home. And both of these places speak to her activism work, I feel, because she was able to address a void, yes. uh, a need that our community yes, had. Yes, yes. Um, and still does have, mm -hmm. right, um, a, a place that, you know, would encourage um, black artists to, you know, showcase their work, discuss their work, and to also learn from older artists um, mm -hmm. who had, you know, made it, um, so to speak. Um, and so, you know, those, those were kind of like some of her uh, initial beginnings, which, you know, have landed us to where we are now. Um, and uh, before passing away, uh, Dr. Burroughs was also a Chicago Park District Commissioner, yes. uh, which, mm -hmm. you know, she gained that position under um, our late great mayor, Harold Washington. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so with that, you know, um, uh, she also helped to establish other cultural heritage institutions here in Chicago, the Mexican Fine Art Museum, mm -hmm. the Puerto Rican uh, Art Museum. And she was well on her way with working with other ethnic groups. Yes. Um, in addition to, you know, these three main, DuSable being the first, of course, mm -hmm. um, with helping to establish these particular centers uh, in the community of the people that they were created in. Um, she was just absolutely, you know, a force to be reckoned with, you know, an amazing person. Um, and, you know, in my work, I'm really happy to be able to, you know, carry through her legacy. Yes, yes. I think that's the goal of basically every person who works at the DuSable. Mm, um, sure one of mean. Dr. Burroughs' um, most popular poems was, what, sh what will your legacy be? Yes. And it was a call to action to not just black youth, but um, adults as well. What will your legacy be after you've gone on from this world? What will people remember about you? Will they remember anything? Mm -hmm. Will Will your work still stand as a testament to who you were as a person? Um, that Those were all um, tenets that she lived by and she tried to imbue into all that surrounded her. And we at the DuSable do our utmost every day to ensure mm -hmm. that we are carrying on that legacy and, and the legacy mm -hmm of our own, you know, to leave behind as well. Yes. Um, I know we have some amazing photographs of Dr. Burroughs that I'd like to get to. And Dr. Burroughs, you know, whenever I think of her, I think regality. I think of a stoic presence, but also a powerful presence. Mm -hmm. But she had a family like everyone else. Yes. She had children, grandchildren, just like everyone else. Yes. So we're going to go into these photos very quickly, okay? So Skyla, can you just tell us a little bit about this photograph in particular? And it came from the archive, correct? Yes. Amazing. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Um, and so this photograph here, I, I love it because, you know, it shows like her um, being soft. You know, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Burroughs loved animals, especially cats. And what a lot of people don't know is that, you know, she had two sets of, uh, I guess, sets of pets of cats. I don't know how to put that exactly. <laughs> but she had her cats that lived in her home and then she had some cats that, you know, they were a little wilder so they uh, remained yes. outside. The feral. But, yes, mm -hmm. but this was one of her cats. His name was Humphrey. And when I ran across this photograph, I had to show it because, you know, like I said, you know, Dr. Burroughs was 
definitely a force. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times, you know, when talking with us and, you know, people that she would run into in the public, you know, she would give us directives telling us what we would need to do. You yes. know, just being this stoic woman, you mm-hmm. know, and very straightforward with a serious face. Yes. You know, so we often don't see photographs of her, you know, like I said, you know, like smiling, you mm-hmm. know, and with her pets and, you know, things of that nature. So I really just wanted to be able to share that, you know, yes. to just show yes. like this other side, you know, and she was very comical, yes. you know, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, like I said, to show like this uh, lighter side, but, you know, life is serious. So, you know, sometimes we have to handle ourselves accordingly. Definitely. You know? And the job mm-hmm. she had was very serious very as well. I so. mean, the founder of Sable, so. Southside Community Arts Center, she was a force here in the mm-hmm. city. So, but I do love that picture in particular. It shows her having a moment of, of being light and being playful and, you know, showing her affection with her cats that she loved. She had mm-hmm. 17, right? Yes. 17 cats. At one point. At yes. one point. Yes. Oh, my yes. goodness. Okay. Yes. So here is another image of Dr. Burroughs. I think that is more in line with how we um, oftentimes saw her, again, very regal. Do you know what this image was for by chance? No, I I don't, but I do know that it has been used a lot because yes. you know, yes. like I like I mentioned, you know, um, Dr. Burroughs just being like this very powerful, strong presence. You know, uh, she definitely was a matriarch, and mm-hmm. not just of course with her family and in the community, but she definitely was seen as you know the go-to person. Uh, you know, in not just for like I mentioned the black community, but also in the art world, the education mm-hmm. world, uh, Dr. Burroughs um, initially started her uh, career as a teacher yes. uh, at DuSable High School. She mm-hmm. also taught at Kennedy King, um, Elmhurst College. You know, know yes, okay. yes. So she has a very strong following. Um, and, and as I mentioned, you know, uh, she is definitely seen as a matriarch in all of these communities. Um, Oops, sorry, we're just mm-hmm. gonna go forward just a bit. Okay. Well, Wes, I think we give that a second to catch up. So I've heard you talk. We've shown these different photographs that have come from the archive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you'd mentioned that things that are found in, in an archive are going to mm-hmm. be more 2D materials. Yes. Could you give us kind of an idea of what else we might, what else or, or stands out to you from our okay. collection? What types of things? Okay, so I pulled up just a couple of examples um, of some materials that can be found in our archives. So as you know, uh, the DuSable Museum, because we've been talking about mm-hmm. it, uh, has a plethora of materials in our archival collection. Uh, and these are just two objects that are uh, two representatives of, you know, those materials. And the first is um, the New Negro Traveler and Conventioneer, uh, which was started by Clarence Markham. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, really quick, I believe, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we have a caller. So we're going to take that call, then get back into the topic. Hello, caller. Can you state your name and your question? My name is Artelia. And I just want to say right off the bat that I really love your show. I really do. It is it's so nice and informative, and I love the DeSable Museum. I'm a member, and I just love seeing that my museum is being represented on the, te- on the television. Now, I knew Dr. Margaret Burroughs, and she was one of the most wonderful people in the world. You would walk down the street and she would stop and give one of her, her drawings to anybody that was walking down the street. Yes, and did was. you know that she used to roller skate? I did know she used to roller skate. Dr. Burroughs was a woman of many talents and the message that you're saying about her, your interactions with her were, it's basically the same that everyone has, that she was extremely friendly, extremely giving, sweet, and wanted everyone to visit the DuSable Museum to learn a little bit about African American history, which so oftentimes was overlooked. So we thank you so much for your call. Did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Okay. okay, thank you so much, Artelia, for your um, question. We're going to turn back over to Skyla, who was walking us through two um, archival documents that she found in particular. So we'll go back to that. Sure. So uh, as I mentioned, um, at the top is a cop. Well, 
It's uh, the New Negro Traveler and Conventioneer, um, which is a magazine that was started by Clarence Markham. And what uh, I would love for you all to know about this is that uh, Mr. Markham was actually interested in uh, travel research and the travel patterns of African Americans in the late 1800s and early 1900s. So I think that he did an amazing job to not only provide resource materials for African Americans that were traveling, um, but to also be able to provide us a context of how and where uh, how we traveled like what our roots were and like mm-hmm. where we stayed during travel etc but then Amazing. he also linked to other african-american owned businesses of that time mm-hmm. uh as well yes. and so you know because as we know during that era you know it's very difficult um for us to you know like move about throughout travel the united safely. states mm-hmm. yes and the second uh archival collection is the jackie orms papers uh, Jack- Jackie Orms was the first African American woman cartoonist, and so we have her papers as well, right? And uh, so we have uh, about approximately well, we have over fifty archival collections, um, many, many more. Uh, but we have fifty archival collections at this moment that are ready to be accessed by you, our public, um, for research needs, uh, curiosity, things of that nature. And all you would have to do is contact me again at my email address, mm-hmm. S Hearn at DuSableMuseum You can find it on our website. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. To set up an appointment to be able to come in and access our archival materials for your research needs, um, and to you know fuel your ideas, your creativity. Um, I'm definitely here there, excuse me, uh, to help you uh, with those needs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a certain time period that you would like people to do that? Like, let's say they want to call you tomorrow. Is that okay? Or or are we waiting for a specific date? Are you going to have hours that people can kind of access it or by appointment only? Okay. So initially, yes, it will be by appointment only. But, you know, um, I'm I'm open in terms of like what the scheduling is and trying to meet meet the needs of um, our patrons. So then that will be something that would be discussed at the point of, you know, us talking about uh, our schedules, um, you know, et cetera. Uh, but at this moment, it would be by appointment only. Okay. I do plan on having open hours okay. as we move into it. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So all of those of you, all of those, if you want to volunteer, come on down. Okay. All right. I believe we have another caller. Can you state your name and your question? Hello, my name is Kathy. How are you guys today? We're amazing, Hello, Kathy. Kathy. How are you? I'm doing fine. I wanted to know, is there an exhibit at the museum on Dr. Burroughs, and how can I get more information? So at present, uh, we did have an actual exhibition dedicated to Dr. Burroughs and her pieces of art, Um, but we will have um, another one that's coming into play also, which commemorates the 100th anniversary of Dr. Burroughs. Um, I'm going to see, do you know any more about that exhibition when it comes in? No, at this moment I don't, but as soon as we have all of our details completely worked out, they will be on our website, which Mm -hmm. you can refer to uh, for more information. Information. Yes. And then also, Kathy, if you're interested, Dr. Burroughs has a very large archival collection, over 100 boxes. So again, if you reach out to me, then, you know, we can talk to you about, you know, some of the amazing contributions she's made and also allow you access into that archival collection so that you can learn more about Dr. Burroughs and her past work. Yes, because as we've been saying I think this whole got time, she... Yes, yes, Kathy? Okay, Kathy, thank you so much for calling. We appreciate your call. And um, I just wanted to reiterate again how absolutely phenomenal Dr. Burroughs was. Just imagine, not only was she a mother, not only was she a wife, not only was she an educator, she was the founder of a museum. She was the founder of a community founder of a community art center. She wore so many hats and still made time to reach out to all of her constituents, people that had questions for her. She helped other organizations. She truly was a Renaissance woman, and we are again are just ecstatic to be able to continue in her footsteps and making sure that we highlight her all along the way. All right, thank you all so much. We want to go ahead and make sure that we give you all the information again to visit the DuSable Museum. We are located at 740 East 56th Place in Chicago, Illinois, 60637. We are open Tuesday through Saturday. uh, Sundays, we're open from 12 to 5. Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5. 
And just as Skyla mentioned, if you want to visit um, or if you want more information, visit the website www.dusablemuseum.org. Um, if you want to contact myself, Erica Griffin, or Skylar Hearn, you can always visit the website, which lists all of our email addresses and ways to get in contact with us. So make sure that you do that as well. All of the events, all of the um, programs update all the time. So that's the best way to find out what's going on is to visit the website. Um, also... We want to recap the events that we have coming up. So on Saturday, August the 19th, we have Southside with You, which is the amazing story of the first date with uh, between Barack Obama and Michelle. And then also coming up on Tuesday, September 5th, we have the Margaret Burroughs film series, uh, Portraits of Nikki Giovanni. So we would like to thank all of the great people at Can TV for allowing us to be here yet again to talk about the amazing DuSable. We want to thank the people at the DuSable Museum. Thank you all so very much for your time. Tune in next week.